Homemade diets are becoming a lot more popular these days. But why is this? When pet food companies formulate their food, process the ingredients, and package everything so conveniently, to the point where all you have to do is pour the food into a bowl and you don't even have to refrigerate it, why would anyone go through the trouble of making a homemade diet? I think we can all mutually agree that we want to provide the best for our pets. We want to buy them fun and engaging toys, cozy beds, and of course, healthy, tasty food. The problem is, when it comes to providing the best food, things start to get very overwhelming and confusing. Pet stores bombard you with aisles and aisles of brands with very alluring packaging. These marketing tactics are used to entice you, but oftentimes end up tricking you in the end. Tricked? How? Pet food companies actually have a lot of leeway when it comes to what they can say to make their food appear fresh and optimal. You've probably seen the words recipe, entree, or formula on many dry and wet food packaging. Did you know that for the manufacturer to be able to include these words, it only needs to contain 25% of said ingredient? And when you see the word with, for example, dog food with beef, the food only needs to contain 3% of that meat. Yep, only 3%. Well, what takes up the bulk of the food then? When looking at many popular brands' ingredient labels, you often see one animal protein as the first ingredient, but the remaining ingredients are usually non-animal products like rice, wheat, soybean meal, corn gluten meal, and synthetic nutrients. This sounds more like livestock feed to me. And unfortunately, the ingredients in cat foods aren't much better. Well, why is this so bad? We've been feeding our pets processed foods since the 1950s and they seem to live decently long lives. So what's the problem? Dogs and cats are very resilient animals. After all, they came to become what they are today, our pets, because of how adaptable they are to living with humans. This is a positive in a sense because even though canines and felines fall under the order carnivora, they won't necessarily get sick or die right away from eating corn and grains. Whereas a snake would if it was fed this type of food. But on the other hand, it's an unfortunate thing because they can be nutritionally abused their whole life. Health ailments like frequent UTIs and crystals, GI upset, skin inflammation, excessive shedding, kidney disease, and possibly even cancer can all be linked to a species inappropriate diet. So what in the world do you do? Having owned multiple different species of domestic and exotic animals, studying species-appropriate diets for them, as well as working in the veterinary field for a handful of years now, has brought me to believe that the best diet to feed them is an unprocessed, balanced, homemade diet, which can either be raw or cooked. There are of course some that don't agree with meat-based diets who claim that our pets are too far removed from their wild cousins and therefore unable to process raw meat or need grains included in their diet. But this simply isn't true. Despite humans breeding for certain physical exterior characteristics, their genetic makeup remains the same. Simply look at their jaw structure, teeth, and digestive system. Their teeth are meant to rip flesh and chew bone from a whole prey animal, and their short and highly acidic digestive tract is meant to quickly and efficiently process the raw meat and bone. Some like to use the fact that dogs are actually omnivores and therefore can eat a diet high in plant-based foods. However, cats are obligate carnivores, meaning their body is designed to receive essential nutrients from animal sources. Since it's not always feasible to feed whole prey animals though, cooked and raw feeders mimic this the best that they can by providing muscle meats, muscular organs, secreting organs, oily fish, eggs, shellfish, and for raw feeders in particular, raw meaty bones. Though some cooked feeders do still provide these if they want the dental benefits or want a natural source of calcium, phosphorus, and magnesium. Balanced homemade diets have shown to be an optimal diet through clear physical evidence. 
Dental hygiene is improved from chewing on raw meaty bones. GI issues subside because instead of being forced to process legumes and grains, it's processing fresh whole foods that the body was meant to receive nutrients from. Overweight pets will often lose weight as they aren't intaking such calorically dense balls of kibble. Their skin and coat will improve as it receives more bioavailable animal-based nutrients and omega-3s rather than plant-based and synthetic nutrients. And urinary health will also improve as the diet will contain 50 to 75% moisture rather than the 5 to 12% moisture which kibble contains. This results in less concentrated urine and more urine flow to keep the urinary tract clean. In my personal opinion, raw diets will always be the most optimal as the nutrients in the foods are untouched and unaltered, the moisture content is higher, and of course, it's how they would receive it if we weren't there to feed them. This is only skimming the surface on why cats and dogs will thrive on a balanced homemade diet. If you would like to learn more about feeding balanced raw meals to your pet, or need more convincing with evidence and studies, my whole channel is dedicated to this. But if you want to start with the basics, watch this video.